welcome to another episode of drone mapping from A to Z. In this episode, I'll be creating a 3D map using Pix4D. Instead of uploading the images to the cloud service like I did in my last episode, I'll process the images on my own computer. I'll also go over some terms that are used when making a 3D map like triangle mesh, point clouds, manual and automatic tie points, camera points, and what's the point of making a 3D map if Google has all the maps anyone needs? Well, chicks dig mapping. All right, let's get started. Today, I'm gonna be capturing images to create a 3D model of this structure behind me. I won't be using the Phantom 4 Pro like we did in the last episode because it's still not compatible with mapping programs, which makes capturing the images needed for mapping more time consuming and not as accurate. Right now it's partly cloudy with 10 mile an hour winds, which is okay. We don't have any power lines to avoid like we did in the, making the last model. Uh, but the obstacles for this structure are gonna be planes and police because today we're gonna be creating a 3D model of the air traffic control tower. Troy, this is an abandoned tower? Oh, right. So basically, we don't have any obstacles. Keep in mind that for capturing good images, you should calibrate your drone before each flight and make sure you have plenty of overlap in your images. Now on to processing. Open Pix4D, click on New Project, and name your project. I'm naming mine ATC Tower. Once you've named it, click Next, then click Add Images, then select your images, then click Open, then hit Next. Your images will then be added to your project. Click Next. Now you'll see the images will automatically upload the geotag from your images. It's best to keep the default settings click next. Now the next screen gives you the option to select the map type. For this demonstration I'm selecting 3D model. Then click finish. The images are automatically uploaded into the map showing the location they were taken. The next step is to unselect the step 2 then click on processing options. Click on step 1 initial processing select full which gives you the original image size then click OK now click the start button to begin step one now that step one is complete quality report pops up for this 3d model these first four quality checks should have a check mark close your quality report uncheck the cameras box you should now see a rough draft of your 3d model before beginning step two, we need to create four to five MTPs, which are manual tie points. Pick a point on your map. When you click on that point, a box on the right hand side of your screen will appear with the images that are associated with that point. To create your first MTP, click on the new tie point icon above the images. Choose a recognizable point in your set of images. Scroll in as tight as possible on that point in an image and click on it. A yellow target will appear. Find and click on the same point in each of the remaining images. Note that after the second image, the program will generate a green X on the remaining images. Sometimes the green X will not be exactly at the point. So be sure when you click on the point you have chosen, it's the same point in every image and not what has been generated for you. If you are not able to clearly identify the point in any one of the images, skip that image and move on to the next. The more images you mark, the better but you should have a minimum of five. When you're finished, click the apply button to complete that MTP. Creating these tie points pulls the details of your project together, which leads 
to a more defined and accurate final product. After you have created four to five evenly dispersed MTPs, go to the processing options button on the bottom left corner and click on the step two point cloud and mesh. Under the point cloud tab, I recommend using default options, which are half image size. Under the 3D textured mesh tab, medium resolution should be checked, which is the default setting. Under that tab is your export options. You will check the box for the file type you want your final project to be in. I use the .obj object file. Click OK. Then you're ready to start processing step two, which is the final step when creating a 3D model. Click Start.